All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai. Once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakar, Kodash. All praises and glories definitely do. Well, pretty much the whole day went by, and I wasn't able to. Uh, record a video been waiting for the Holy Spirit to uh, you know pretty much uh, inspire me and um, I think I found a subject that I can get into uh, based upon this comment this is from servants of the Lord Yahweh Shai you know sometimes the Holy Spirit feeds you abundantly with uh, the energy to do videos and sometimes you know the Holy Spirit doesn't uh, work as much you know it's all spiritual you know I'm not gonna do a video and um, pretty much I'm you know I end up babbling and no real edification comes out of the video you know what I'm saying so I rather wait for the Holy Spirit because we speak According to the scriptures, we speak by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so I'd rather wait for the Holy Spirit to inspire me to uh, do a video. And that way I know it will be edifying to, you know, to the Lord's elect. You know, the elect brothers as well as the elect sisters. Because uh, there is a scripture that speaks about uh, the women being part of the elect. Okay, there, there's a, a scripture... Where it mentions elect lady. Now, when it says elect lady, doesn't mean that uh, that she's gonna go into the scriptures and teach men the scriptures. That's not her job. Elect lady just means that she's just been chosen to be saved, to be delivered, and uh, you know, pursuant to First Corinthians the fifteenth chapter, she's gonna be changed. And her purpose is going to be to bring back uh, the Israelites that die on this side, as in the two-thirds. You know, her, her purpose is going to be to bear children. And that's pursuant to the book of Titus 2 and 5. First, let me uh, get the scripture here, elect lady, to show you that the women are part of the elect. Part of the elect, meaning elect or chosen to be saved. Because when you go into the Greek word for chosen... The Greek word there is electos, which that's where you get the word elect from. Okay, so you're going to have the elect men, the elect women, and the elect children. Okay, all right, uh, 2 John 1 and 1, the elder unto the elect lady. Elect meaning what? She's chosen. Okay, she is chosen to be uh, delivered. She's chosen to be saved. Now, this same lady, guess what? She's back in the reincarnation she's back in the regeneration and whoever she is she's going to be delivered she's going to be saved okay she was sealed to be saved uh she was sealed to be saved back during this time period okay when yahweh shai came on the scene okay the elect unto i'm sorry the elder unto the elect lady and her children so not only her but her children Okay, they're back in the regeneration, reincarnation, and they're going to be delivered. Okay, they're part of what the Bible calls the one third. Remember, Zechariah 13 and 8, two thirds shall be cut off and die, but the one third shall be delivered. The one third makes up the elect, the one third of the nation of Israel. And there's a breakdown amongst the one third. Okay. Um, the elder unto the elect lady and her children whom I love in the truth and not I only but also all them or all they that have known the truth so you got sisters out there that know the truth and they're part of the elect and when the time comes it doesn't matter if they're older or younger we're all going to be changed okay so when they're changed their job is to well let's read it Titus their job will be to uh, bear children, let's read it, 
the book of Titus, the second chapter. Um, let me see where I'll start here. Uh, the book of Titus, the second chapter, the third verse. The age women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. Now you got certain women out there that are older women or older women, and they're going to be delivered. They're part of the elect. They're going to be saved. And instantly, when they hit the chariots, all right, when they hit the chariots, instantly they're going to be changed back to a younger woman. They're going to get their beauty back, their suppleness, everything, okay? And one of their jobs is, is going to be bearing children, okay, as we're going to read. Um, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of the Heavenly Father be not blasphemed. So that's pretty much the position the woman is going to go back to, to loving her husband, to bearing children, as a matter of fact, um, and, you know, loving their, loving their children. Uh, let me... Uh, Get that scripture guide the house. Guide the house. It is right here. Uh, the book of First Timothy, the fifth chapter. I'll just go right to the point. I will therefore that the younger women marry. Okay. So the the let's say the older women that are part of the elect that make it. And they make it into the chariots. And we know what the Apostle Paul says. As a matter of fact, let me get it real quick. As soon as we, and I'm saying we, and I'm saying it by faith. I hope I'm part of that number. Guess what? If I keep uh, doing this work and edifying the Lord's elect, then I expect to be delivered, man. Because Yahweh said, if you, if you love him, you feed his lamb and you feed his sheep. You feed his lambs and you feed his sheep. That's what you're supposed to do. That's our job. So. Uh, we're going to get rewarded for that. And wh what's the main reward? To be delivered. To receive salvation. All right. When Yahweh Shai comes back with those holy angels. Right. And he comes back to destroy the society and set up his kingdom on the planet Earth. He's going to deliver the elect from the coming destruction. Matthew 24 and 30. Okay. So 1 Corinthians 15. Now, the thing is, we're all going to be changed. Okay. And I'm going to read what the Apostle Paul said to the Israelites in Corinth, which, which is powerful indeed. Now, you go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Um, I'll start the 50th verse. And that includes the women as well as the children. We're all going to be changed. Okay? We're all going to be changed. Let's read it. 1 Corinthians 15 and 50. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of, of the Heavenly Father. We're in flesh and blood now. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. And all of us are corrupt. All of us are corrupt. Okay? That's why we need a Savior. All right? That's why Yahweh is coming to deliver us out of this cor uh, corrupt flesh. And to put us in a, into a body that's incorrupt. Like His body. Okay? So it says, Neither doth corruption, which is what we're in now, inherit incorruption. Those are the bodies we're going to get. Okay, as a matter of fact, um, that's a fulfillment of uh, the book of Ezekiel. We're going to go back to 1 Corinthians. Let's go to Ezekiel real quick. Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. All right, Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. And uh, the 24th verse. All right, let me put this on pause here. So we're not disturbed. All right. So uh, the book of Ezekiel 36 and 24. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. Now, how, the, how is the Heavenly Father going to do that? By Yahweh Shai. That's exactly what Yahweh Shai is going to do. When he comes back and he gathers the elect, eventually we're going to go back to the land of Israel. And thus, 
the beginning of the kingdom shall be uh, shall take place. The beginning of the kingdom being built up. And boy, what a kingdom is going to be. All right, if you want to get an idea of what the kingdom is going to be like, all you got to do is read the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter and the 22nd chapter. It goes into it. So those two chapters, they got to be fulfilled. All right. Uh, Ezekiel 36 and 24, for I will take you from among the heathen, among the nations, which were scattered among them now, and gather you out of all countries and I and will bring you into your own land. What's our own land? Israel. What scripture comes to mind? Isaiah the 14th chapter, beginning at the first verse, right? Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Clean water is a metaphor for those incorruptible bodies we're going to get. Just like what the, Apo the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians the 15th chapter. That's what that clean water means. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. And ye shall be clean. Yeah, because we're going to be in those incorruptible bodies. Okay? From all your filthiness, meaning our sins and our wickedness, from all your idols. Right, we're only going to have one God as we're supposed to have. His name is Yahweh and his, own, and his only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Because you can't worship the, the Father but through the Son. Okay, that's how the Father set it up. Uh, even Yahweh Shai, well, it's written First 1 Timothy 2 and 5, uh, there's one mediator between us and the Most High, Yahweh Shai. That's 1 Timothy 2 and 5. And Yahweh Shai himself said, no man can come to the Father but by me or through me. That's how the Father set it up. And we that understand the truth, we ain't got no problem with that. Okay? We embrace that. Indeed, Yahweh Shai is our Savior. Yahweh Shai is the image that every Israelite should look up to. Every Israelite man should want to be. Just like Yahweh Shai, okay? Because he's perfect. Anyway, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? A new heart also will I give you. That goes back to those incorruptible bodies. A new heart means an, a new mind, all right? A mind that is programmed to righteousness, total righteousness. In other words, we're going to go back to how we was before Eve and then Adam fell. We were perfect, okay? Back then we were perfect until the serpent came to Eve and then uh, Eve went to Adam and thus began our downfall. We started learning about the knowledge of wickedness. So now that we've gotten a full education about the knowledge of wickedness, we're going back to the knowledge of righteousness, total righteousness. And that begins with the elect. You know, there's a scripture where it says, Every man in his own order. It says Yahweh Shai, then the first fruits, and then the rest that are Yahweh Shai's. So there's an order, there's a structure. Okay? So again, uh, Yahweh Shai was the first. As a matter of fact, what I'm reading here, if you think about it, Yahweh Shai was the first to taste this. Right after the crucifixion and then the resurrection, he was able to taste this. You know, clean water was sprinkled upon him. He was clean, totally clean, right? He was totally perfect uh, from all his filthiness. From, from uh, because back in the past he, he did worship he did worship idols as as Solomon did not Solomon worship other gods? Yes, he did. What's the proof? And Solomon was Yahweh Shai. The proof is that Solomon, the many wives that he had, he ended up building temples to their gods. Okay, we can read about that in First Kings. I believe it's the 10th chapter, beginning at the first verse. So Yahweh Shai, the bottom line is Yahweh Shai was the first to taste what I'm reading here. Okay? Uh, jumping back to the 26th verse. A new heart, meaning a new mind. In the Hebrew, the word there is lab, which means mind. A new mind also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. Now, by the way, this, this, uh, this promise hasn't been fulfilled yet. We're waiting for this promise to be fulfilled. This is going to take place after Yahweh Shai delivers his elect. All right, we're going to be the first to taste this out of the nation of Israel, what I'm reading here. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And we're going to be given a body 
that's conducive to doing that. Okay, this is where we go back to uh, First Corinthians. Now you understand why the Apostle Paul said what he said here. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Heavenly Father. Because in the kingdom of the Heavenly Father, we're going to be perfect. We're going to be perfectly righteous. And we're going to have bodies that are able to be so. We're going to have uh, bodies, us men and the women and the children, right? We're all going to be perfect, man. We're all going to be perfect. Okay? Uh, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Heavenly Father, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. And I just read to you an example of that in Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So in order for us to taste Ezekiel 36 and 24, what I just read, we have to be changed, brothers. And you few sisters that watch these videos and your children, we all have to be changed. And we're going to be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Let's read the next verse. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, like that. When Yahweh Shai comes and he gathers the elect, right? He gathers, gathers the elect right into the chariots. We're going to be changed like that. Okay? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. That's when Yahweh Shai is coming back. At the last trump, which signifies the end of Esau society. And what's going to happen on that day? Well, you're going to have the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, uh, destroying this place, ripping this place apart. And you're also going to have the nuclear missiles ripping this place apart. All right. Between the, the chariots of the Lord and the nuclear missiles, this whole country, America, which is nothing but a corporation owned by the super rich, this whole corporation slash country is going to be set on fire, 100 percent fire. This place is going to be turned into a lake of fire, okay? And that's the scripture where it says the Lord have a sacrifice in Bozra. You know, one of uh, Elder Pasatar's favorite scriptures. <laughs> the Lord have a sacrifice in Bozra, all right? Bozra represents America. America is the modern-day Bozra, all right? Which Bozra was a capital city in the land of Edom. You had Petra, you had Bozra, okay? So America would be the modern-day Bozra. All right, so in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. The dead are the brothers that died in this faith, like King Masha, Elder High Priest, Ya'aikwab, and other men that died over the years, knowing this knowledge, knowing this truth, and never denounced their faith. They kept their faith all the way to the end. Well, they're going to be raised up what? Incorruptible. And they're also going to be young too. And guess what? We're going to know it's them. No matter, like King Marshall, when he comes back, he's going to come back young. And we're going to know it's him. We're going to know, oh, that's King Marshall right there. Oh, that's Elder High Priest Yaquab. Elder High Priest Yaquab, he's going to come back young. Okay? And vibrant. Okay? So we, we, we have a, a great day in store for us, man. Great things are about to happen for us, us Israelites, man. The Lord's chosen people. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we, now here the Apostle Paul said it twice, he said, and we shall be changed, we're going to be changed, and, and what's an example of that? Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, the 24th verse, among many scriptures, we are going to be changed, all right? For this corruptible, which is what we're in now, must put on incorruption. So we're going to get those bodies that is going to be impossible to sin. Virtually impossible to sin. The bodies that we're going to get. We're going to be 100% perfect. Not perfect. Perfect. <laughs> All right. <laughs> For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal, which is what we're in now, that's why we get sick, we get tired, you know, we have headaches, toothaches, you name it, man. Earache, eye ache, everything aches. Well, guess what? The bodies we're going to get, nothing, ain't nothing going to ache. As a matter of fact, if you go in the, we shall wipe away all tears. Let me get that, wipe away. And you see, when you get into scriptures like that, 
it, it, it comforts your spirit through all the adversity that we're going through. This is why the Bible is known as what? The Comforter, right? Uh, this is the book of Revelation 21. Now, I told you uh, the two chapters that go into the future kingdom is Revelation 21 and 22. Well, let's read it. It says, uh, Revelation 21 and 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Now, new heaven mean what? New rulership. The rulership of the Israelites, the rulership of Yahweh Shai, ruling this planet earth in righteousness. Wickedness will be a thing of the past. And this is after the nuclear destruction, post-nuclear destruction. There's going to be a new rulership and a new earth. Now, when you get, get into the word new in the Greek, the word there is kainos, which means refresh. So it's really the same old earth, but the earth is going to be refreshed. The trees are going to be uh, 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 refreshed. Even in Isaiah, the 14th chapter, it tells you how the trees are going to be, uh, are going to be, uh, uh, the trees are going to be happy when Esau is taken down. So they're going to have, a, the trees are going to have a different vibration, a different feeling to it. Even in our kingdom, you know, the, the grass is going to be greener and man, the earth is going to be like a, a, a straight up paradise. The only part of the earth that's going to be a desert is America, 100% desert. Now that's after the fire dies down, which the fire is going to burn for a long, long time. Okay. Because so many missiles are going to hit this place. And so many chariots are going to destroy this place that this place is going to burn for a long time. All right. So it says, I, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There you go. That's Esau's heaven. And that's Esau's rulership. It's gone. Out of here. Done. Finish. All right. Again, this is a future prophecy that the Apostle John saw in the island of Patmos. And it's going to happen. All right. <laughs> because if it don't happen... It would make the Heavenly Father a liar. And the scriptures say it's impossible for the Heavenly Father to lie. Okay. Uh, and there was no more sea. Right. Uh, and, I, and I, John, saw the holy city. And there was no more sea. Meaning what? Like I said, this place here, America is going to be a desert. 100% desert. As a matter of fact, they, uh, in the movie uh, Planet of the Apes, all right, we always talk about that. We always use that analogy. The first one made back in, what, 1968, starring the greatest actor that ever lived, Char Charlton Heston. <laughs> All right, when you watch the movie, you're thinking he's on this strange planet ruled by apes. And then you come to find out that all the while he's been on planet Earth, in particular New York, you know, because <laughs> you see the uh, towards the end of the movie, you know, spoiler alert for those of you that haven't uh, seen the movie, you might want to cover your ears so you don't have to hear. But, uh, you know, most people have seen that movie. They played it all the time on the on television. At least they used to. But you can go on YouTube and find it. I believe there's five, uh, five of those movies. You know, Planet of the Apes, Beyond the Planet of the Apes, Conquest for the Planet of the Apes. I forgot the other two. But the, the best one... Uh, probably is the first one, okay? Well, anyway, uh, towards the end of the first movie, uh, Planet of the Apes, you find out that he's been in New York because you see the Statue of Liberty, damn near buried up to its neck in sand. And, you know, Heston is on the beach and he's he's doing that dramatic speech. You know, you did it, you did it. You, you know, basically, the scene is showing that this place has been destroyed and it became a desert. Now, the point I'm making is, the apes, uh, the head ape had told, which the apes are a metaphor for us, of course, which shows you the wicked elite know we're going to be ruling the next kingdom. Anyway, uh, the the head ape, for lack of a better term, I forgot his name in the movie. Uh, I think it might be Dr. Zaius. Might be. Anyway, he told uh, Heston in that scene, you don't want to go out there because according to the movie, Heston had won his freedom, you know, <laughs> Which is which is madness. Ain't no Edomite in our kingdom going to be free. They're all going to be slaves, every last one of them. But anyway, in the movie, supposedly he won his freedom and he was banished. And uh, the ape told him, look, you don't want to go out there. You may not like what you find. And what did he find? He found that all the while he was in, 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 on planet Earth, in, in uh, America, in particular New York. And the apes had called it the Forbidden Zone. 
And what was it? It was a desert, 100% desert. Okay, so that's the future of America. And by the way, when you check out the credits of that movie, uh, one of the individuals that was a writer for that movie, Planet of the Apes, was uh, Rod Serling. Rod Serling is famous for the uh, uh, television series, The Twilight Zone, uh, from what, 1958 to 1964, the original one, the best one in my opinion, uh, The uh, Twilight Zone, that was created by Rod Serlin, okay, and he's one of the writers, next time you see Planet of the Apes, when you see the credits coming up at the end, just freeze frame it, you'll see Rod Serlin's name there as one of the writers for that movie. And we all know how those of us that are familiar with the Twilight Zone, the original one, we, we all know how deep uh, Rod Serlin was. He was no ordinary. And some of us think he might be. He might have been a Jake. He might have. But, uh, you know, we all know how deep he was. He was no ordinary individual. You know, he had, he had a lot of uh, deep insight. All you have to do is watch certain of his Twilight Zone uh, shorts. Like, um, case in point, To Serve Man, you can check that out. That, that's a deep one. Uh, another one is uh, Monsters Are Due on Maple Street. Okay, that's another deep uh, Twilight Zone episode, you know, not for the average mind. So, anyway, getting back to the scripture, uh, the second verse, Revelation 21 and 2, and I, I John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the most high out of heaven. What does that mean? Meaning the elect coming out of the ships that they've been, uh, you know, the spaceships that they've been uh, chosen to be delivered. Um, we're going to be in the spaceships for a period of time, and then we're going to come out the spaceships. Okay, that's how we're going to be delivered, whether you believe it or not. Matter of fact, a, a precept that comes to mind is um, Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26 and 20. Let's read that real quick. It says, come my people, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers, as in those spaceships, when Yahushai comes and he abducts, just like Yahushai himself was abducted, uh, Acts the first chapter. You can clearly read that. So the elect, when Yahushai comes back, the elect are going to be abducted, taken right into the so-called UFOs, right into the spaceships. So it says, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors. Now, in the Apocrypha, it speaks about the strangeness of the elect salvation. All right, that's the book of, um, as a matter of fact, let me show it to you re real quick. Um, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter and the first verse. All right, Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. Let's begin at the first verse. Then shall the righteous man... Stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. And we do that when we are out there in those camps and we're teaching this knowledge, this truth. We're right in the face of those that have afflicted us. Those are the Edomites and all the other nations. All right. And made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. Yeah, like the small hats or the small hatters. They're, they're, they're terrified when they see us out there, you know, chanting the Hebrew and uh and teach, teaching this word, teaching this truth, and going into the knowledge and proving who they are and proving who we are, which their top hidden elite, their top scholars, they know exactly who we are. They've just hidden the truth from us for many years. And they can't believe that we're not finding out who we truly are, which which is showing you the power of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his, through his son, Yahweh Shai, also showing you the fulfillment of prophecy. The fact that in these last days we are waking up to find out who we are. Okay, in the same Apocrypha, it speaks about there we shall remember ourselves. And that's what's happening now, man. We're remembering who we are. We're coming back to our nationality. We're coming back to our power, which his name is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. We're coming back to our laws, statutes, and commandments. We're coming back to our high holy days. Yeah, we're coming back to being the Lord's chosen people once again, man. And it's a beautiful thing. Um... When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed. Here's the point. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his, of his salvation. So what does that mean? The strangeness of his salvation. What's an example of that? 
being abducted by a so-called UFO, a glorious so-called UFO, a glorious spaceship, a glorious chariot, which is beyond the chariots, the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. They're beyond this world. All right. They're from another dimension. Okay. And they're going to make themselves known. Everybody's going to see them. Uh, Revelation 1 and 7, behold, he come with clouds. Who's the he? Yahweh Shai. And every eye shall see him. So everybody's going to see those so-called UFOs, those chariots of the Lord. Okay. <laughs> so this is what is meant by shall see or shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all they look, all that they look for. Now, many people are going to be thinking that they're being being invaded by little green men from Mars because that's what the wicked elite have told them through these movies, War of the Worlds and, and what, what have you. But we that know the knowledge, we that know the truth, we know it's different. We know it's Yahweh Shai and the angels. That's why I'm um, in, um, how's that go? Uh, uh, bear with me for a minute. Um, uh, the book of Jeremiah 10, Jeremiah 10 and 1. Let's read that real quick. It says, Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus, sa thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. But many people that don't know this knowledge, don't know this truth, they're going to be dismayed. There's a scripture where it says men's hearts fail in them for fear for the things that are coming upon the planet earth. So a lot of these people that are unlearned, that don't have this knowledge, this truth, when they see the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, they're going to have heart attacks. They're going to be losing their minds because in their minds, they're really going to be thinking that they're being invaded by little green men from Mars. Okay. Little green men from Mars have finally taken over the planet earth. But we that know this knowledge, we that know this truth, we know different. We know really it's Yahweh Shai and the angels coming to destroy the society and Yahweh Shai is setting up his kingdom on the planet earth. You see? So it says, uh, Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. But we're not heathens. We know the knowledge. We know the truth. We have the faith. Okay? So going back to Isaiah 26, Come my people, enter down to thy chambers. In other words, enter into the spaceships, right? And shut thy doors. Kind of remind you of, Mo of uh, not Moses, but uh, Noah. When Noah finally entered into the ark and he was delivered, there you go. So the Monday ark is going to be those, those so-called UFOs, those chariots. All right, that's what's going to save us from the coming destruction. Just like the ark saved Noah and his family, Noah, his wife, his sons and their wives, told the eight people they were saved from the coming destruction, which was the flood of waters. This time, the elect are going to be saved from what? The flood of fire, the lake of fire. See? So it all it all lines up, man. All right? And, and Yahweh Shai himself said, for, for it shall be like in the days of Noah. Actually, when you read the scripture, the, the name Noe is in there, which is short for Noah. N-O-E. Noe. Okay? Come, my people, enter down into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment. Because how long is it going to take Yahweh Shai to destroy the society? One hour. That's why it says a little moment. One hour. For in one hour, so great riches has come to naught. So that's some serious destruction, man. You want to talk about the ultimate blitzkrieg? Look up the term blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg literally means lightning warfare. And that's how it's gonna, that's how long it's gonna take Yahweh Shai to destroy the society. One hour. One hour. That's why in the book of Revelation, and uh, this video is gonna be premiered, so you can put it in the comment section. What does it say there? It says, uh, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught. And this one hour is not a dark saying. It's literally one hour, 60 minutes. Okay? That's how long that's and that shows you the serious anger of the Lord. That's why. When you go in the same book, Isaiah 47, it tells you how the Lord is coming back. He's coming back with some serious anger, okay? There's a scripture where he said he shall cry like a travailing woman. So that's some serious anger. That's going to be his battle cry when he comes back. You know, you have a battle cry when a warrior is, gets into that zone of fighting and destroying and demolishing. 
He, he, he usually lets out a battle cry, a war cry. Well, Yahweh Shai going to let out a war cry, a battle cry. And it's only going to take him one hour, <laughs> one hour to destroy the society, man. That's some serious ass kicking. Anyway, Isaiah 47 and 3, thy nakedness shall be uncovered. That's Esau right now. His nakedness is being uncovered. He is being exposed and there's nothing he can do about it. Begin with the small hatters. There's nothing they can do about it. This is their manifest destiny. This is their time to go down. But before they go down, they got to be exposed. Their whole society is being exposed. The secret societies are being exposed. The machinations of how they do their wickedness is being exposed. You know, they as a people is being exposed. You know, this is, lines up with what the Apostle Paul said, that, that man of sin shall be what? Revealed. We're in that time now. And we're helping to reveal, we're helping to expose this man. So really, this, this precept here, thy nakedness shall be uncovered, the Lord is using us to do that. You know, the, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, yeah. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. That's Esau, his shame is being seen. I will take, now this is the words of Yahweh Shai. This really should have been writ written and read. What I'm reading right here. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. What does it mean vengeance? Well, the Lord is going to take vengeance for what they're doing to his people, particularly the elect, Esau and the other nations, and what they did to him more than 2,000 years ago. He's still pissed off about that, how the Romans had him on the cross. You had, you had uh, as a matter of fact, let me show you he's still pissed off about that. Let's go to Ro uh, Revelation 1 and 7. This is the proof right here. Yahweh I got that on his mind, man. It's been more than 2,000 years, and Yahweh Shai still has that on his mind. And he wants he wants his pound of flesh. He wants revenge. And, and who's going to deny him from getting it? <laughs> Let's read it. Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds. That's Yahweh Shai. The clouds are the so-called UFOs. As a declaration of war. Yahweh Shai is making a declaration of war. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him. Right, because the skies are going to be covered by these so-called UFOs. Some of these so-called UFOs are uh, as big as a city, as big as a state. Okay, there's a scripture where Ezra saw the, the chariot that Yahweh Shai was in. He described it as being a mountain. And then he said he looked for where the mountain was cut out of because it was a flying mountain. And he said he couldn't find where, where the mountain was cut out from. Why? Because it wasn't actually a mountain. It was a chariot. Okay, so how about that? So, behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. So why is that written? More than 2,000 years ago, you had, it tells you in the scriptures, you had individuals that pierced Yahweh Shai. It tells you that blood and water came out. So those same individuals are back now in the reincarnation. And instantly, they're going to know who they are, and it was them that pierced Yahweh Shai more than 2,000 years ago. As soon as, soon as they see Yahweh Shai, you know, with those so-called UFOs with the chariots, instantly they're going to know, because the Heavenly Father is going to put it in their mind, it was you, it was you who pierced the Lord. <laughs> now, what do you think Yahweh Shai is going to do to them? What do you think he's going to do to them? Is he going to lovingly embrace them? I don't think so, Okay. I leave it up to your imagination what Yahweh Shai is going to do to them, them clowns that back then pierced them, okay? Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And what does that teach you right there, people? Reincarnation, regeneration. Because those individuals are going to be alive. The Heavenly Father Yahweh and His Son Yahweh Shai go make sure those individuals are, are alive and well to see the coming of the Lord. And to know that it was them that pierced the Lord more than 2,000 years ago. Now, how powerful is that? Huh? <laughs> and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen, which means so let it be. And do you know that's the same thing said in Isaiah 66? Okay, that is the, damn yeah, I'll read it to you. Isaiah 66 and 15. It says, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind <laughs> to render his anger with fury. Again, 
What did I say earlier? When Yahweh Shad comes, he's going to bring some serious ass whooping. That's why it's only going to take him one hour to destroy the society. One hour, 60 minutes. Why? Because he's going to come with fury. And there's nothing that the so-called white man will be able to do about it. Nothing any other nation will be able to do about it. As a matter of fact, they're going to mount up their armies, Esau leading them. And according to the prophet Ezra's, they're going to be eviscerated. Look that word up. Eviscerated. Okay? As a matter of fact, Ezra said all he saw was a smell of smoke. And, and the, guess what? The prophets that saw that vision, they got sick. All right? Daniel saw it. Habakkuk saw it. Ezra saw it. And they all got sick. That's how detrimental the vision was. That's how powerful the vision was. Okay? And we can see it, man. We can see, begin with Elder Pastor down. We can see it crystal clear, man. Crystal clear we can see it happening. I always tell you, brothers, about envisioning what you read. You got, you, got, you got to envision what you read. When you read these scriptures, you got to see it in your mind's eye. Okay? You got to envision it. So anyway, um, Isaiah 66, 15, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And that's why this place, America, is going to be turned into a lake of fire. And let's not forget the, the name America means bitter. And that's how it's going out. It was born bitterly with slavery and all that and how the land was ripped off from our brothers, so-called North American Indians. So it came in bitter, bitterly. It's going to go out bitterly. Thus saith the Lord. It's going to go out bitterly. Okay? For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead. Another word for plead is judge. Will the Lord judge or plead with all flesh? So that's a lot of people, man. That's a lot of people. For by for by did you catch that? For by fire and by his sword, the sword, the sword represents destruction. That's why it is written, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Let's get that. Woe unto you. Woe unto you. See, a lot of people don't understand the day of the Lord. Woe unto you. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. It is right here, Amos, the fifth chapter, and the 18th verse. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. And I just read an example of the day of the Lord in Isaiah 66, right? Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you, especially if you don't have this knowledge, if you're not armed with this information, <laughs> okay? You won't know what the hell is happening. Why do you think it says men's hearts failing them for fear on the day of the Lord? Because they don't have this information. But we that have this information, we're going to be cool as a fan. We're going to be cool, as they say, cool as a, a cucumber. Look that saying up. Okay? We're going to be the epitome of cool. All right? Because we have this knowledge. We have this information. Uh, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. Isaiah uh, 33 and 6. So again, it says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. <laughs> so that's going to be a pretty dark day, man. When you factor in all that destruction that's going to be happening. Hey, when the, when the Twin Towers was taken down, now this is, that's just two buildings. Two massive buildings, but nevertheless, it was just two buildings. You saw the footage. As the buildings came tumbling down, you saw a wall of smoke, man. And that day, I remember that day clearly. That day was a, a bright, sunny day. And southern Manhattan was turned into a, a, a dark, gloomy uh, day of death. Okay? That was a hell of a day, man. And that, was a, that day was a bright, sunny day. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. And I remember it like it was yesterday. And when those buildings came down, it turned Southern Manhattan into a gloomy, uh, a gloomy dark day, a day of mass death. Okay? So imagine the day of the Lord. Try to imagine that. That's why the, the, the prophet Amos said, the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. 
as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, meaning no escape. That's what that's saying. All right. If you flee from a lion and a bear meets you, the bear can rip you up just like the lion can. Probably even worse. So what's, what's the point? No escape. The only ones that's going to escape is the elect. Why? Because Yahweh is going to deliver them. Everybody else is going to die. Everybody else here right in America is going to die. And the people that are in the bomb shelters in America, well, that's going to be their tomb. Because this place is going to be engulfed with fire. Okay? So, <laughs> as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. There you go. <laughs> no escape. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it. And by the way, brothers, and you few sisters that watch these videos, this prophecy hasn't even happened yet. Think about that. This prophecy, which is in the Old Testament, hasn't even happened yet. We're waiting for it to happen. All right. So now you understand Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire, and that's on the day of the Lord, for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. There you go. You see? So... Getting back to Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so are men, meaning let it be. Now we know why they're going to wail. Because Yahweh is going to be doing a lot of killing, a lot of destroying, a lot of destruction. Okay? Again, Isaiah 47 and 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. He's speaking to Esau. This is a message to Esau, beginning with the top banking families. Yahweh Shai said he, he will take vengeance and he will not meet thee, meet you, Esau, because you're in power right now. I will not meet thee as a man. You go in the book of Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, it tells you who, who the Lord is going to meet. Esau, the one that's in power right now. Isaiah 63 and 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? America is the modern day Bozrah. America is this capital city of Edom right now. So Yahweh Shah is coming to the capital city. Again, is it not written? Pastor's favorite scripture. The Lord has a sacrifice where? In Bozrah. The modern day Bozrah is America. You're not going to see America in the Bible. Doesn't mean it's not there. Who is this that cometh from Edom? This is a future prophecy, by the way. Hasn't happened yet. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. What does that mean? Me and Yahweh Shai coming with those uh, so-called UFOs. He himself being in a so-called UFO, a spaceship. He's going to be leading the charge. All right, Isaiah 31 and 5. As birds flying, so will the Lord pass defending Jerusalem. Again, if you look at the formation of the birds that fly when they're migrating to the south, you see their formation. You got the one bird in the front leading the pack of birds behind them. That's how Yahweh Shai is coming back. He's going to be in the, in the head chariot, in the head spaceship, which is going to be as big, as big as a mountain. That's what Ezra said. And he's going to have the other chariots following him. And they're going to fly from the east to the west. And the whole earth is going to witness this phenomenal event, Okay. And on that day, America is only going to take the Lord one hour to destroy this place. Okay? I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Who is the, who's the Savior? Yahweh Shai. Wherefore, so, the, so the Isaiah is asking him in, in the vision, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? Again, that, that represents the blood of the people Yahweh Shai is going to kill. A lot of people are going to die. A lot of, a lot of blood. There's a scripture in the book of Revelation where it speaks about blood is going to be as the, as the horse's bridle. You know how tall a horse, a horse is and the horse's bridle? That's a lot of blood, man. A lot of blood. <laughs> a lot of destruction. My goodness. And, and for us to see all this and still maintain, uh, 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 still maintain a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A uh, uh, function in mind for lack of a better term, still maintain a function in mind, we would have to be changed. All right? There's a scripture where it says, 
Only with thine eyes shall thou see the destruction and the reward of the wicked. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. This is how I wish I say in this. And then you got these people, God is all love. You know, Jesus loves the little children, which his name ain't Jesus. His name is Yahweh Shai. These people do not know the Heavenly Father. And that's the majority of our people. They are totally ignorant to the Heavenly Father, his only begotten Son. That's why in Jeremiah 4 and 22, the Lord said, My people are foolish. They are sottish children. Sottish means stupid. But see, we're blessed. We know that we, 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 had, we you know, we know the truth. We have the understanding. All praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. It says, I have trodden them, I have trodden the winepress alone. The winepress represents the people. And of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. How is he going to do that with those so-called UFOs? All right, laser beams are going to come out, those so-called UFOs. The, the prophet Habakkuk spoke about that. Habakkuk, the third chapter, where it says there were horns in his hand. That's those laser beams coming out the chariots, destroying the infrastructure, destroying the buildings, destroying the cars destroying the people, turning them into dust. As it is written, the Lord shall threaten who shall not be beaten to powder before his presence. What does that mean? That's when the laser beam come out the chariot and let's say that you have somebody running, and the laser beam come out and hit him, he instantly he's going to be turned into a pile of dust. And I believe it was um, Habakkuk when he saw that he got sick. All right. And men, let's not forget, brothers, men were stronger back then. A lot stronger than they are now. And this man got sick from seeing that destruction. So how much more us? That's why Yahweh Shem Yahweh has given us a mindset to, to endure, to, to be able to see that and still function. Okay? Because it's going to be horrific, to say the least. Anyway, I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my remnant. That's just a, a, a figure of speech. All that means is the Lord is going to have a lot of blood on his hands because he's going to kill a lot of people. That's what that means. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart and the year of my redeemed has come. Who's his redeemed? The elect. So this is the time to deliver his elect and also bring vengeance. Vengeance upon Esau, Edom. Because when you read the first verse, it starts off with who? Edom. So, you Edomites, you're in trouble, man. And there's nothing you can do about it. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I really didn't intend for this video to be that long. As a matter of fact, I was going to focus on this comment here. But I'll leave that for another. You know, it talks about polygyny and, uh, you know, Bishop Nathaniel teaching now that uh, polygyny for men is adultery. Meaning if you have more than one wife, you're, you're going off, according to Bishop Nathaniel, which is total bullshit. One scripture that destroys him is Isaiah 4 and 1, where it says seven women shall join unto one man. How do you explain that? But once again, you know, this guy, Bishop Nathaniel, he has to teach that because he's under the 501c3. Because I was meditate, meditating on it earlier, and I said, well, why would he want to teach that? Why would he teach that garbage? A man can't have more than one woman. Then it hit me like, like a ton of bricks. Well, he's under that 501c3, and Esau teaches that garbage that you can't have more than one woman. If you if you have more than one woman or more than one wife, which the word wife just means woman, then you're subject to become uh, you're subject to be called a bigamist, a polygamist, and you're subject to to receiving penalty according to Esau's law. But does the Bible teach that? The answer is no. We can have as many women as our hearts desire. The only thing is you're supposed to take care of these women. So it wouldn't be conducive in this society if you have a woman to have more than one woman, because they're nothing but these women are nothing but problems in this society because they're all tainted by that thing called feminism. And they all believe that they're superior and you're inferior. And in this society, indeed they are in this society, the women are superior and the men are inferior. That's why it, it is written. All things are expedient, but not all things. No, I'm sorry. All things are lawful, but not expedient. Okay, it's lawful to have more than one wife, no matter what that nonsense Nate is saying. It's lawful to have more than one wife, but uh, it's not conducive right now. It's not wise. 
to have more than one wife. The only way a man would be going off is if he has a wife that belongs to another man. That would be called adultery. But outside of that, if that woman is not joined to any, any other man, he can take on another wife. But once again, Nate has to teach that garbage because he's under the 501c3, which is also known as a gag order. It stops you from bringing out the full truth. This is why we keep telling you guys out there, we, Great Millstone, we got 100% truth. There's no way Bishop Nathaniel could have 100% truth when he's under 501c3. There's certain things he can say and there's certain things he can't say based upon that 501c3 guideline. And if he violates it, they could revoke that status and then he'd have to he'd end up have, having to pay taxes and all of that. OK, so it's called a gag order. All right. Just Google the history of the 501c3. It was proposed by Lyndon Baines Johnson. It was it was to stop the church from bringing out the full truth. That's why he came up with it. Now, we, in contrast, we at Great Millstone, we're not under no 501c3. We're free. Like like the Apostle Paul said, we're the Lord's free men. Nothing is hindering us from bringing out 100% truth. We don't have to watch what we say. As long as we're saying the truth. <laughs> we're bringing out all the truth, man. 100%, man. So it's up to you guys out there to discern between the two. That, that is written in the book of Malachi. You know, discern between who is serving the Lord and who is not. It's just that simple. And if you do an honest assessment, you will find out that Great Millstone, we're the ones that serve in the Lord. In sincerity and truth, 100%. Now, these other groups, the answer is no. Okay? All right, so that being said, on to the next one.